Welcome to this lecture in marketing management. In this lecture, we are going to talk about uh, the entry strategies. So, how a company can enter the international or the global marketplace. And then we are also going to talk about the global piece of marketing. So, first of all, we will discuss the various strategies that the company can adopt in order to enter the global marketplace. And then after that, we are going to talk about the global piece of marketing. So, let me change the slides now and uh, through explanation as well as examples, we are going to understand the concept. So, let me start here. So, when we talk about the entry into the global marketplace, uh, so what it means? So, there are a lot many organizations that start in their parent uh, uh, country or the home country and when they start performing good. So, after a certain time, uh, these organizations think about moving into uh, the global marketplace or going ahead out of their uh, moving out of their parent country. So, they want to move out of the home country for uh, capturing other markets also and this increases their global market share as well as brings uh, increased profits to these companies. So, there are so many companies which are operating globally, there are so many companies which are operating in more than one countries. Uh, like we have the example of Coca Cola, which uh, started in the US more than 100 years ago, but today it is uh, manufacturing a beverage or a drink which is being consumed globally across almost all the nations of the world. And we have companies like Apple who are selling phones to many countries across the globe. And we have other global products such as the Xerox photocopy machine and we have uh, so many automobiles like uh, Mercedes Benz and BMW which are being manufactured and sold to various countries across the world. So, uh, meaning is to say that there are companies who aim to move outside their home country and uh, uh, capture a larger market share globally. So, what is the, uh, so by selling the product or service in another country, what a company gains? So, these are the certain points uh, in which uh, there are certain points which are elaborating the importance of the entry into foreign marketplace. So, what does a company gain by entering a foreign marketplace? So, first of all, what happens is that the company introduces itself to huge markets. So, on a global scale, so when a company moves outside the parent country or the home country and uh, it goes into the global markets, so it gives itself a lot of exposure and a larger canvas or a larger market gets available to the company for selling its product and services. Then the next point that happens is when the company gets access to huge markets outside its home country it also increases the sales and profits. So, there are customers who are wanting to purchase the products and services and when a company offers them the products and services in their own country, they more than readily accept. Uh, for example, Apple came to India and Apple has been selling its iPhones in India and Indian people are more than uh, readily accepting the iPhones of the company and the company has got a huge profit share. Uh, from the Indian market. Likewise, we can also take the example of McDonald's. So, McDonald's was initially a US company, but when it came to India and it started its restaurants in India, uh, Indian people also started visiting McDonald's and thus uh, the sales and the profits of McDonald's increased many folds. So, it is only through uh, the entry into the foreign market or going into other countries that McDonald's or Coca Cola or Apple were able to increase their profits and become uh, huge international corporations. The third advantage of going into other countries uh, with the business is gaining brand recognition. So, today we have Apple and we have so many other com companies uh, uh, like Daimler which is an automobile manufacturer in Germany. So, all these companies have a global presence and these brands are recognized worldwide. So, if I make four rings here, so automatically it would be evident that I am talking about Audi and if, if, if I make an M here like this, it can be automatically recognized that I am talking about McDonald's. 
So such strong is the brand recognition and this brand recognition has come only when the companies have decided to go into the uh, other markets and start selling their products and services in so many other countries of the world. So this gives them a huge uh, brand recognition. Then it reduces the risk and the risk is reduces uh, the risk is reduced in the following manner. So when the company starts selling the products and services in many countries across the world, uh, the risk is reduced in the manner that even if it fails in the home country uh, and even if the product is uh, you know a failure in the home country, uh, people of the other countries uh, might accept it and the profitability would be uh, continued. So this reduces the risk or rather I can say that this, this uh, distributes the risk spatially. So while the company is selling the product only in one country, there is a risk that if the people of that country stop accepting the product, the company would suffer huge losses. While if it goes to foreign markets, then even if uh, the home market in the home market, the people refuse to accept the product or there is some competition issue or there is some other issue, uh, then uh, revenue flows can keep coming from the foreign markets. So in a way, the risks are also reduced. And Last but not the least, one of the advantages of going into global market is that the product's life cycle is extended. So when we talk about a product's life cycle, we know that the product is in the introduction stage. Uh, so that is the first stage. Then the product goes into the growth stage and then it is a maturity stage that is stage number three. And finally, the stage number four is the decline stage when the sales of the products go down. So the life cycle is extended in a manner uh, like suppose the product is in the maturity stage in the home country, uh, the product might be in the growth stage in some other country and the product might be at the introduction stage in some other country. So while the product can decline very fast in the home country, in some other country, in some other market, uh, the product might stay in the maturity stage for a long period of time or sim in some third country, the product might attain a huge amount of growth. So in this way, the overall uh, life cycle of the product gets elongated. So it is not like uh, the it is not like the product comes down and it declines all of a sudden. So it takes time and a lot of markets overseas uh, continue uh, purchasing the product well and keep it keep it in in the in the in the maturity or the growth stage and uh, good cash streams keep coming to the company. So to sum up, these are the these are some of the major uh, advantages of entry into the foreign market. Now, scale of entry obviously depends on whether the company would enter the foreign market on a big scale or a small scale. So there are pros and cons of each. So if the company enters the foreign market at a big scale, what happens is there are huge costs. So when the company enter the foreign market at a huge scale, uh, huge costs are involved. So entering a market on a large scale will require significant resources and therefore the risk is increased. So when the country moves into the foreign market with, uh, with, with, a, view, with a huge, uh, I should say scale, then lot of financial resources are put uh, on stake and therefore it becomes a very risky venture. While entering on the smaller scale can offer business owners the chance to learn about the new market. But on the downside, if the company enters the foreign market with a low scale, then what happens is that they fail to get sufficient attention. So therefore a trade-off has to be discovered and then the company has to find out the optimum scale at which it should enter the foreign market so that it can serve the market well as well as it can also make sustainable profits from the market. Uh, from the scale of entry, we talk about the strategies of entry. So let me uh, please read out uh, the various names of the strategies and then we are going to look into these strategies one by one. So one of the primary strategy that the company adopts to enter the foreign market is exporting. Then there is a second strategy of uh, 
licensing that the organization can use to enter the foreign market. Exporting and licensing are very, very popular while in the last 15, 20 years, the uh, strategy of franchising has also become very popular wherein the organization rolls out franchisee opportunities. So, uh, some organization in the foreign country takes up the opportunity and then becomes the franchisee. Uh, joint venture which is also called JV in short. So, JV is one of the very popular strategy that the organizations adopt to enter foreign markets. Apart from joint venture, there is uh, FDI or foreign direct investment. Now, foreign direct investment is uh, a very popular strategy which is so much evident in India, especially after uh, the economic liberalization of 1991. So, after the economic liberalization of 1991, India's FDI inflows uh, rose many folds because Indian economy, a lot many country came to Indian economy and they established their businesses here. So, we are going to study about uh, FDI and how uh, it can be used uh, to enter the foreign market. Then there can be a strategy of entering a foreign country through wholly owned subsidiary. So, through wholly owned subsidiary also uh, the company can enter the foreign market and then last but not the least uh, there is a method of piggy backing through which uh, the company can ensure its entry into the foreign market. So, here we have around uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 strategies we have around uh, which the company can use to enter the foreign market. Now, let us talk about exporting first. So, exporting is about making the product in the home market and then taking the product to the foreign market. So, the first point says that exporting is the direct sale of the product or the service in another country. It is possible the best known method of entering a foreign market as, as, as well as at the lowest risk. So, exporting is one of the oldest method uh, of entry into the foreign market. Uh, even in the times of Britishers, they used to take raw materials from India and then after making the product, they used to export the product to India. So, this was one of the oldest method as well as this is the method which involves the uh, one of the lowest degrees of risk, wherein the home country is where the product is manufactured or made and then after manufacture, the product is then sold into a foreign market. So, the second point says that all goods are still produced in the home country, then these goods are sent to the foreign countries for sale. However, there is a rise in the transportation costs and therefore, the cost of exporting rises. So, whenever there is an increase in the transportation costs and there has been an increase in the transportation costs, study increase in the last uh, few years and the increase in the in the cost of transportation actually is uh, then evident because uh, the transporting the product becomes very costly and then the company has to increase the price of the products in the foreign markets. So, the majority of the costs involved with exporting comes from marketing expenses. So, these are the various types of costs. Uh, usually, the exporting needs the involvement of four parties. So, what are the four entities which are usually involved in exporting? Uh, there is the business that is the organization which is actually manufacturing the product. Then there is an importer. So, the importer is the country which accepts the product which are made by a company in its home land. And then there is a transport provider. The transport provider is the entity or the, uh, or the organization that agrees to transport the products which are manufactured in one country to the other country at certain agreeable charges. And then the fourth party is of course, the government of the foreign country. So, the government of the foreign country is the party which will allow some company to export its product into its country. So, suppose there are two countries India and South Africa and suppose some product is being made in India and it is being exported to South Africa. So, there will be four parties. One, there would be the company, the Indian company which would make the product in India. Then the other party would be the government of South Africa which would allow exports from India into South Africa. Then the third party would be a transport uh, entity or the transport organizations that would take the product from India to South Africa and the fourth party would be the 
Indian company itself that will manufacture the product in India. So, this is uh, the major the major points about exporting as an entry into the uh, foreign market. Now, after this we talk about licensing. So, licensing is also one of the most uh, popular methods, but it is more related with the scientific manufacture, the manufacture of uh, medicines and patented products etcetera. So, the products which are patented can be manufactured in a foreign country only through the process of licensing and genuine licenses have to be obtained from the company that does the patent on its product. So, let me read out uh, licensing allows another company in the target country to use the property. Now, what sort of property does that company uses? Uh, the property in the question is normally the intangible property for example, the trademarks, production techniques or patents. So, like we discussed that one country in one when one company in a country uh, patents uh, some product. So, that product which is under patent can be manufactured in some other country only when the company which has uh, which has uh, got the patent allows the other company to manufacture the product and this permission is given in the form of a license. So, the company issues the license uh, to another company in the foreign market that it can uh, manufacture or make the product uh, with some kind of a license fee which is taken by the company in the uh, parent country. So, the license uh, the licensee. So, the, the, the company which will obtain the license is called the licensee and licensee will pay the fee in order to be allowed the right to use the property which is written above the patent, the trademark etcetera. So, the licensee will have to pay the fee and then it would be granted the permission to manufacture the product which is under a patent. Now, licensing requires very little investment and can provide a high return on investment. So, whenever licenses are given, license uh, licenses are given for a licensing fee and it can give a very high return on investment. The licensee will also take care of any manufacturing and marketing costs. So, even the manufacturing and marketing costs are to be borne by the licensee. Now, we talk about the franchising. Now, franchising is another very popular option. <coughs> it is somewhat similar to licensing in that intellectual property rights are sold to the franchisee. Now, in franchising there are two parties the franchiser and the franchisee. The franchisee is the party which obtains the right and the franchiser is the party which grants the right to the franchisee. However, the rules for how the franchisee carry on business uh, are very strict. So, McDonald's operates on the concept of franchise. So, McDonald's is the franchiser and some restaurant can become the franchisee of McDonald's. So, it is the duty of the franchisee to follow the rules and instructions of the franchiser. So, it is very strict and if the rules are not followed properly then the franchisee is taken back. So, therefore, the franchisee has to follow the rules and it also gets the training uh, as to how the business operations must be carried out and a huge amount of standardization is observed in franchising. So, whenever the franchisees are uh, franchisees offered there has to be standardization in operation and for example, any process must be followed or specific components must be used in manufacturing. So, the party the franchiser instructs and trains the franchisee as to how the business operations are to be carried out and it is the duty of the franchisee to obey the terms and conditions of the franchiser in, in this process of franchising. So, this is one way of operating uh, of entering the foreign market. Then uh, the next is joint venture, joint venture or JV it is also popularly called. Now, a joint venture is actually a venture which is uh, which happens when two independent companies come together and these two companies come together and establish a jointly owned business. So, that is called a joint venture. And now, one of the owners will be a local business. So, an Indian company and a South African company can come together to form a joint venture. So, that will be uh, one of the routes for the Indian company to enter the South African market. So, it can it can enter the market through a joint venture also. 
So the two companies would then provide the new businesses with a management team and share the control of the joint venture. The jointly owned company is managed by the two companies together and there are several benefits to this type of venture. It allows you the benefit of the local knowledge of a foreign market and allows the cost sharing. So while one of the company would be South African company and the other company would be Indian company, so they can pool the resources, they can bring in the financial resources and they can open a joint venture and because there is a South African company involved, so the South African company is well aware of the culture, the subculture and other people issues and the customer issues of South Africa and the Indian company does not have to worry about it. So there is a lot of burden that the Indian company gets relieved of because there is a South African partner and the partner is already well aware about the uh, legal requirements and the customer issues in South Africa. So opening a joint venture is a good option of entering a foreign market. Then after joint venture we talk about the foreign direct investment. Now foreign direct investment is uh, actually uh, an extremely extensive process of entering a foreign market. Let us see how. FDI or foreign direct investment is when uh, the company is directly involved and it invests directly in the facilities of a foreign market. So when a US company uh, comes to India and it purchases the land, sets up the factory, sets up offices, uh, hire the people here and brings in the expertise and establishes machinery and starts the manufacturing process and whatever the products are made then these products are sold in the Indian market and when it earns profits, a major portion of the profit goes back to US or the US company and the revenue, uh, uh, the small the tax is given to the government. So when we talk about FDI, FDI happens when the company actually enters the foreign market in the physical form. So the company goes into the foreign market, it establishes all the business processes, purchases land etc. and then everything is done uh, physically. So that is why it is called a risky venture, it involves a lot of cost, it involves a lot of effort. It involves a lot of uh, time on the part of the company to go into the uh, foreign uh, land and start a business from the scratch. So whenever the business is started from the scratch, uh, we talk about FDI. So it requires a lot of capital, of course the capital to cover the cost such as premises, technology and stuff. But apart from capital, a lot of effort is required and a lot of expertise is also required. And FDI can be done either by establishing a new venture or by acquiring an existing company. So there are two routes open for FDI. One is to go to the foreign country and start everything from the scratch or the other route is to acquire a company which is operating in the foreign country. So suppose an Indian company wants to enter uh, the US market. So an Indian company can enter the US market either through uh, starting the business from the scratch and purchasing the premises and hiring the staff and then starting the process or what the Indian company can also do is the Indian company can simply acquire a US company and then that is how uh, it can start the business and operations in US. So that is also one form of FDI. Next we move on to wholly owned subsidiaries. Now a wholly owned subsidiary or WOS is somewhat similar to foreign direct investment in that money goes to a foreign company. Now what the difference is, instead of the money being invested into another company uh, with a wholly owned subsidiary, the foreign business is brought outright. So instead of the money being invested into a foreign company, the foreign business is brought outright. So this is what happens when a company operates to the root of wholly owned subsidiary. It is then up to the owners whether it is continue to run as before or they can take more control of the wholly owned subsidiary. So this is what happens here and it is in somewhat uh, very much similar but there is a little difference between uh, operating through WOS and uh, going through FDI. Uh, piggybacking is one of the methods here. So piggybacking involves two non-competing companies working together to cross-sell other product or services in their home country. 
so two non competing companies come together and then try try to uh, some kind of uh, cross sell each other's products and this is called piggy backing means riding on each other's back although it is a low risk method and it is a low risk method involving little capital some companies may not be comfortable with this method as it involves high degree of trust so because two independent entities are coming together so automatically the business will depend on a lot of trust as well as allowing the partner company to take a large degree of control over how your product is marketed abroad so this is about piggy backing so let me just sum up uh, whatever the methods that we have discussed we discussed about exporting which is one of the oldest and easiest method then we talked about licensing licensing is about giving licenses to a foreign company to manufacture products which are under patent we talked about franchising the operating the system of franchisee and the franchiser in which the franchisee has to work uh, under the guidance and the rules and instructions of the franchisers have to be followed then we talked about the jv or the joint venture the joint venture consisted of two entities that independent entities come together to form a third entity called the jv and this is one of the best methods to enter foreign markets then we talked about fdi which is one of the most ex extensive methods to enter foreign market because a company either goes and start a business from the scratch or either it acquires a foreign company in some other country and we talked about the system of wholly owned subsidiaries so company can also set up a wholly owned subsidiary in the foreign land and start its business operations and then finally we talked about piggy backing in which two independent non related companies came together and start cross selling each other's products which requires a lot of trust from here we talked about the global piece of marketing now the global piece of marketing are what the marketing mix elements are now these are the product price place and promotion so these are the four p's of marketing mix so here the product refers to the offering of the company whatever offering the company has and whatever the products and services it has taken to the foreign market so if we talk about daimler daimler products are cars and the various brands of cars are then offered across the globe into the various markets so uh, it offers uh, the various brands of cars and these are very popular so depending upon the road uh, rules it has to manufacture the cars and then the cars are offered to the customers across the globe so product is the offering here and the product may differ from uh, the company to company the design and uh, the features of the product might have a difference uh, between one country and the other then the price now the price means the money which the customer has to pay in order to acquire the product or the service so when a company offers the product uh, globally the price varies from market to market and depending on the economic condition of the company depending on the features of the product depending on the on uh, the level of the competition and depending on the laws of the government and there are so many factors that come into play when the prices of the products are being decided so uh, prices are uh, uh, different different from country to country so this is uh, what pricing is all about then uh, place place is the manner of distribution and the manner in which the product is made available to the consumers so the place decision has to be taken by the company and uh, uh, when the company moves from market to market the method of distribution also changes so the countries in which uh, the digital uh, distribution is very popular the company can adopt that and there are certain markets where the physical distribution is preferred and there are certain products which can be distributed uh, over the internet while certain products need only physical distribution channel the length of the distribution channel and the manner of the distribution channel also changes uh, while moving from one country to the other so that is about place last but not the least about the promotion now promotion as we know that promotion is about making the people aware and promotion varies from consumer to consumer and from market to market country to country depending on Uh, the laws depending on the uh, rules of the promotion depending on the uh, bodies that oversee what types of promotions are being done so these are the uh, four p's of global marketing and any organization that aims to do global marketing has to take care of these four p's and only after taking care of all these four p's will it be able to successfully 
uh, market its product across the globe. Uh, with this, I come to the end of uh, the lecture and this lecture was about uh, global marketing, the 4 P's as well as various methods of entry into the foreign markets. For any queries or issues, uh, you may write down to me. My name is Ashish Avasthi and my email ID is ashish.awasthiavasthi at the rate imsec.ac.in. I would be more than happy to give you a reply of your questions to the best of my ability. Thank you so much. That brings me to the end of this lecture. Thank you.